It is commonly thought that if we send humans to Mars, it's going to be a one-way mission. And that is because how much fuel it takes us to not only get there, but also to safely land on the surface. But if our astronauts were able to refuel on Mars, that would allow them to come back to Earth. In this episode, we're going to talk about the science of creating rocket fuel on Mars and what SpaceX is planning on doing over the next 5 to 10 years. So let's talk about that. So to begin, there are a lot of different proposals and explanations on how we could possibly turn Martian resources into propellant. And since a lot of different rockets require different types of propellants, you can imagine that there are a lot of these proposals. So in this episode, I'm just going to touch base on methane production and how SpaceX and NASA plan to be able to do this on Mars. However, if you'd like me to discuss a different propellant in the future, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to check that out. So let's begin by talking about in situ resource utilization or the process of collecting, processing, and storing goods off of Earth. Now you may ask, why might we want to collect resources off of Earth? And a great example of this is if you're going on a hike. If you're going on a day hike, maybe a few hours, you'd be willing to bring a couple water bottles or so to quench your thirst. However, if you're going to go backpacking for a few weeks, you wouldn't want to bring 10 or 20 gallons of water to carry with you the whole time, but rather you'd want to bring a water purification method so that if you found a river or a stream, you'd be able to purify that water and you wouldn't have to carry it the whole time. The same thing on Mars. If we want all the propellant to go to Mars and come back, we might not want to have to carry it all there. So this is one of the many ways that SpaceX is planning to lower the cost to go to Mars. If they only have to take propellant to get to Mars and then can use propellant stations on Mars to get back, then they can bring a lot more material and mass to the red planet. This is also where the idea comes from that a trip to Mars might be a one-way trip. Because if you only have enough fuel to get you there, and the resources on Mars aren't good enough as we expect, then the astronauts or people that are there might be stranded. However, we don't know if the first missions to Mars are going to be one-way trips, so that's something that only time can tell. So if we want to be able to develop this propellant on Mars, what are we even talking about? What is this propellant, and how do we create it? Well, the propellant that's planned to be used is called methane, and methane is a single carbon atom surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. Now, methane is most commonly known here on Earth as natural gas, and we use this to power turbines, our own ovens, heat homes, and also water heaters. So here's the big question. How do we produce methane on Mars? Well, in a previous episode, we introduced the idea of electrochemistry and electrolysis, and the ability to take a carbon dioxide atom from the atmosphere, and with enough electrical energy, we'd be able to separate it into carbon monoxide and oxygen to form oxygen gas for us to breathe. So this method is a little bit different for creating methane. Instead of taking carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere, we're actually going to collect ice and form it into water. By taking that water and going through the same electrolysis process, we'd be able to separate the H2O molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gas. Then, we would take the hydrogen gas from the electrolysis and combine it with CO2 from the surrounding atmosphere. Under high temperatures and pressures, this starts something called the Sabatier reaction, which is able to create methane and water just from the carbon dioxide and pure hydrogen gas. The water then created can be ciphered back into the electrolysis cycle to then form more hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and the methane and the oxygen gas are then stored as propellants that can later be used for rocket fuel. Now the Sabatier reaction is actually being used in space right now. On the International Space Station, they use this reaction to restore some of the carbon dioxide and hydrogen atoms to form water for the astronauts to use on the ISS. Instead, in this case, the methane is a byproduct that they don't need. However, on Mars, methane and oxygen gas are the main tools to be able to create this rocket fuel. So will this process actually work on Mars? Well, we don't know for sure because we've never tried it there yet. However, Dr. Robert Zubrin here on Earth has developed a prototype that has been able to create one kilogram of methane or propellant here on Earth by using simulated Martian atmosphere and hydrogen gas. Now there is a little bit of a problem with this method, and that is because it takes 17 kilowatt hours of energy for every one kilogram of propellant created. Now you might not know how much energy that is, but to put it into perspective, that's about how much energy it takes to power the about five and a half houses here on Earth per hour. That's quite a bit of energy to create only one kilogram of propellant. Now there's an even bigger problem than the amount of energy that it would take and that is the pure amount of propellant needed to get us back to Earth. 
it's thought that maybe around 20,000 to 100,000 kilograms of methane would be enough to bring SpaceX's big Falcon rocket from Mars back to Earth. And it could even be more depending on how much mass we want to take back. And not only do we need that methane, but we also need a lot more liquid oxygen. Therefore, if you take the amount of propellant we need and how much energy it takes to create one kilogram of propellant, you can kind of realize that we're going to be looking at long time scales or a lot of energy in order to do so. SpaceX themselves have even said that 50 to 60% of all the energy they create on Mars will probably be going to developing propellant for themselves. Now, there is an upside to this. Although it would take a lot of energy, SpaceX is currently working on their new Raptor rocket engine. And this rocket engine will use a combination of liquid oxygen and methane. And they've tested it and shown that it might even go beyond their original expectations in efficiency. So the production of methane on Mars is thought to be solved over the next 5 to 10 years when SpaceX sends their first cargo missions filled with production producing plants. However, there still is a little bit of a problem. We don't know where exactly the water ice is under Mars. We know scientifically, but we've never been able to actually study how deep it goes and how much is actually there. So if I was to propose a solution, I would say maybe we need to spend a little bit more time looking at where the water is on Mars. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about water collection. We're going to look into how exactly do we mine the water and how much of it will we need to produce a habitat or a civilization. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.